What's going on drivers and fellow CB enthusiasts, it's Jay Rich back again with another video coming to you from the man garage. That's right. Now we're going to talk about CB antenna grounding today. And we're going to build a ground cable is what we're going to do, like I use on my Freightliner. There's a couple things to go over. If you say, well, I'll just hook a wire like this 16 gauge wire to my antenna and ground it all the way to the frame. No, 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 and no. Eight gauge. Yeah, you're getting there. I do, I do a ground cable with eight gauge. Sure, why not? You can find this eight gauge along with this four gauge that I use on Amazon. You can get this roll for like 10, 15 bucks, something like that. And then essentially what this is, is car stereo ground and power wire, basically. Um, if it's good enough to run two and 3,000 watt amps through a car stereo, then hey, it's good enough for me on a 100 watt CB radio. So, um, on the Kenworth, the T880, the T680, I like to use these ground straps. These are, this is an 18 inch long half inch wide flat braided ground strap and this works really really good on the kenworth 680 880 and 660 i believe um i've got a video and i'll put the link down in the description for the video on using this on the kenworth 680 and 880 because i've seen all types of people they drill holes like freaking straight through the um to the mirror arm and then they'll add some mount sort of like this and and it, you don't have to do all that to ground a 680 and an 880 you, you really don't this and what i show you in the video that i'll put in the description below that's all you need to do you're not going to get it any better than that as far as i'm concerned uh been there done that to more than one so now what we are going to do in this video is I'm going to take just a small length of this and you'll get the idea. We're going to make a, a, a custom antenna ground. These little lugs that I got from AutoZone, they're four gauge. Let's see, we're going to use, uh, we'll just use two different sizes, you know. Um, so, you know, you got a big bolt on one end, a small bolt on the other end. And then uh, I'm going to show you a couple different ways to crimp these because, let's face it, you're little home crimper strippers from Home Depot really aren't going to work on these. So a couple tools that you will need <clears throat> for those of you that don't have the crimpers, a hammer and a chisel. We're going to use some heat shrink. Let's see here. These are the um, cable crimpers that I bought off of Amazon. I think there's probably about like 30, 40 bucks somewhere in there. And they work okay. And some cable cutters that came with these for like 30 or 40 bucks. Um, it's not a bad price at all, really. Um, and I've used them on several projects. What we're going to do is we're building this wire like I have on my Freightliner. Because I'm using this style of a mount, which goes on the mirror hoop. So any truck with a mirror hoop, you'll be able to make this. And mine, I have the lug pinched, sandwiched in the bolt uh, for this. Now you could go on top or you could go down below, whichever works best for you. But I do have mine is sandwiched in the bracket and it works. It works awesome. I mean, it, it really does. So let's go ahead. Let's take this, our lugs, and let's build us a cable. But before we get into the video, go ahead and hit that like, share, and subscribe. It's very much appreciated. All right, so we got our length of wire, and we need to strip a little bit back. And I just like to, say, give it a good measure like that. Good enough. Same on the other side. Of 
good enough. Never mind my mess. I'm a hoarder. I know I'm a hoarder. I know I have a problem. But I can't help it. I collect tools and don't throw scraps away usually. So, now we've got both ends of our cable strip. And let's assume this cable is going to be, you know, 10 inches, uh, 2 feet, 4 feet, whatever it is that you need. Put that in our vise. Let's get our heat source. We're going to heat this up, dip our solder, dip our cable. Doesn't take a lot. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Gonna let that cool for a second. Okay, now we have our end soldered on. Now you'd say, well, why not just go ahead and crimp it in the vise? You know, just smash it down real good in the vise. Well, usually that does not work whatsoever. It'll just slide right out. But what you can do is you'll take a hammer and a chisel. And it's not always easy to get this right on it. But if you'll put a crimp in it, like that, like so in the middle, that is more than likely guaranteed to never, never come out. Now let's do it the next way. Get my heat source. That's hot. Just gonna hold that there for a second. Let that cool. Let the uh, solder cool in there so it sticks to everything. Now we're gonna leave that in the vise. Come in with your crimping tool. Give it a good crimp. You can go both ways if you like. Makes you feel better. It makes me feel better sometimes because these crimpers are not like by no means the best, but they do get the job done. I haven't had a failure with them yet, so it works really good for me. All right, let's move on to our heat shrink. Now, what I do when I make a, a longer cable is I'll actually use two pieces of heat shrink and I'll put it over the wire before crimping the ends. This is such a small demonstration piece. Uh, I'm just going ahead and slide it over. And you don't want it covering up your eyelets on either side. And then you're going to need a heat source. What I usually use is just this little crack torch. It's uh, butane operated. You can also use a heat gun. Uh, maybe a hair dryer if you get it hot enough. Will work fine. And you're basically just going to move up and down the up and down the heat shrink and you'll see it will start shrinking and conforming to the part that you're uh, working with here and all the way down to the bottom and that's solid you can't ask for much better than that um, and what I also like to do on these ends these copper ends and stuff if you'll get yourself a little bit of this dielectric tune-up grease it's a clear grease uh, just smear it on and it it helps to keep the moisture out you can also use it on your stud mounts um, all through all in there around the threads all that keep the moisture and the corrosion out so all right guys there you have it that's how i make antenna ground cables but any truck that has the mirror hoop and you're going to use a mount like this i would definitely definitely recommend you building your own ground cable uh, you can pick some up from the store um, AutoZone but are they going to be the right size the right length you know to be able to sneak it through somewhere the right bolts or something you don't ever know but I really appreciate y'all watching 
please like, share, and subscribe. It's very much appreciated. If you have any questions, leave me a comment down below. And also look in the description for the other videos uh, that I mentioned earlier on my ground setup and on the Kenworth 680 and 880. Y'all keep your knees in the breeze and the shiny side up. We'll be seeing you.